Good afternoon on a spring day, right? And so thank you all for being here. We uh, we had our high school coaches clinic. I wanted to mention that to start off. We had a we had a really good group of mostly mostly West Virginia high school high school football coaches. Also, we had PA, Ohio, Kentucky, even some Tennessee uh, staffs here, and uh, really good lineup of speakers. Um, we had um, coaches from Martinsburg were here along with Fairmont, and then um, Russ Propes was was here, a longtime high school coach in Alabama and Georgia, and Kevin Scherer was here, who coached with the Giants last year, Ernie McCook, who took Shepard uh, to the Final Four in Division Two, and then we and we brought back, you know, two two individuals that um, have a lot of ties, West Virginia, obviously Keith Tandy was here, and fresh off of, uh, he's the assistant special teams coach for the Bucks. he did a great job last night. And then Blaine Stewart was here, um, who's offensive assistant for the Steelers. And they, they both spoke and did a great job. And then um, Coach Neyland came and, and shared stories last night and about coaching, about his teams. And so really appreciate him being there. So really good event. Uh, we had practice 10 today, scrimmage number two. Um, uh, some give and take. Uh, we, we played some situational ball. Uh, I thought the offense probably uh, moved the ball as well as they have all spring um, in, bet- in between the 20s. And then defense made some plays in the red zone. Um, I'd say overall defense probably won the day. Um, talk about some uh, top performance performers. Start with defense. Jordan Jefferson, who's playing the nose. Uh, you know, he's really coming on. Um, he had a little bit of a, a setback during winter where he missed a, a couple weeks, but he's he's playing. He, and he finished the year last year playing well, and he's he's played well. Did a really good job today. Both bandits, uh, Linnell Carr and Jared Bartlett. Uh, showed up, made plays. Uh, Zaki Lawton is is where today was about finding out, you know, some guys we wanted to really press and, and play a number of snaps and see what they had. And I thought Zaki st- st- uh, stepped up and did that. Uh, Davis Mallinger uh, played more within himself. You know, he, he's had the ability to make a big play. I thought he just made some routine plays today. Aubrey Burks is really coming on. Uh, and playing that same spot that Sean Mahone held down. And I thought he played really well today. And then Malachi Ruffin had a pick in the end zone during a two-minute situation that he's been a great special teams player for us. And, and he's getting some opportunities on defense this spring. And today he made a big play. And then Andrew Wilson-Lamp, who will be a factor for us in the fall, he had a nice day as well. Um, offensively, uh, both guards, Doug Nestor and James Gmitter, uh, they're, they're – We've really pushed them to be technicians, and I thought they did a nice job with that on the interior today. Uh, Justin Johnson had a big day. Probably, or he was our leading rusher today. He had a big run and really consistent. This was his be- uh, best day of the spring, but he's he's been coming. Um, and so I was pleased with that. Brian Palinde uh, made a couple of nice plays in the pass game. He's been a, a, a blocker most of his career. Um, you know, we're limited receiver-wise right now until we get the guys that have signed, get them here. And so he split out and, and made a couple plays today. So that was, that was good to see. He'll be a threat in the passing game. And then I thought our main – our top three wideouts, uh, Bryce, Sam, and, and KP, all made uh, explosive plays. And so we did some play-action stuff today and then um, – and a couple catch and runs by Sam. So those three were good. And then Grayson, uh, Grayson went with the twos, Malashevich, and uh, made some key third down catches. And then special teams wise, uh, Austin Bringman, I, I, I told you last week, he's had a great spring, continued to do well today. And then Casey Legg hit a 52 yarder to end the, end the practice. So, um, and he's hit the ball solid. And that, that's, you know, that's picking up right where he left off last year. So some guys that did, did well. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll take some questions. To start, you mentioned a number of defensive backs there, and you said at the beginning that was a place you had to evaluate throughout the spring. Spring's not over, but mm-hmm. your evalu- evaluation of that, you know, how much do you still need to add back there? Well, Charles Woods has played at a high level, and we have high expectations for him. And so he's done well this spring, and, and we really believe that he'll be one of the top corners in, in our conference next year. Um, the other spot is, is open, and, and Malachi and Andrew Wilson-Lamp are both getting a lot of playing time there. They kind of alternate with the ones or twos. Um, Moo Moo, who's as a true freshman, is and he and Ty Woodby are, are playing. Uh, they may not be quite ready yet. We'll see. You know, Moo Moo physically is, is a lot closer, and um, and he's definitely got all summer and fall camp to show, and he's making improvements. But we'll add to that room. You know, I think that's fair to say we'll add uh, at least one person to that corner room. Um, it's safety. 
Marcus Floyd continues to grow, and I think that's going to be his his spot. You know, I think we'll leave him there. Um, maybe in some dime packages, he could go down and, and, and potentially play corner. But I think safety is going to be a spot. I think it's a nice fit. Um, he made one really nice play today. And then um, Aubrey and, and Hershey are really battling at that at that other safety spot. And and we're, we'll have some guys. Caleb Coleman made a nice play. This was his best uh, best practice thus far too. And he. Excuse me. He's made some solid improvements throughout. Um, definitely add one, maybe two more, but we'll definitely add one to the secondary. You, know, you said that uh, uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Burks is free or cap? Free so or free? yeah, so he's playing free and um, he's doing a nice job. You know, we get him as the extra guy in the box along, um, and he's got a similar build to Sean. You know, where he's he's. You know, sturdy enough to go in and play the run and play on some tight ends, um, but he's also got enough speed where he can cover and, and get back to the middle of the field. Um, and he was a guy that was coming on last year and would have played quite a bit down the stretch, but he he had the shoulder injury where he he had to get surgery and miss the rest of the year. I guess he missed the last five, maybe four or five. Um, but yeah, that's same same position as Sean. Saint McLeod, any update on how his health is coming along? He, he no, he's uh, no. I, I'll get you one though. Okay, I don't have anything. I don't. I don't want to speak out of turn. So I'll, I'll get you. And next time I visit with the media, I'll do that. Got uh, 14 days left till the spring game. Um, what's the next step? What do you need to see from now till the, till the game? Yeah. So we're gonna go Tuesday and Thursday next week, and then take a take a long weekend, and then come back and go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the last week. And so really use tomorrow to kind of regroup and kind of look through from not only personnel wise but schematically what do we want to install you know rep wise who do we need that we feel like is making a move who do we need to put in position where we put them under a little bit of pressure to see if they can perform um you know i think the biggest thing from an offensive standpoint is to continue to grow the package and get reps um we want to continue to put the quarterbacks in some tough situations to see you know how close they are to being ready you know and and so we did that yesterday we did some two minute work and that's something we need to continue to do um defensively it's more about you know continue to have some versatility in our in our packages so we'll probably use the last two weeks to move some people around a little bit on the front and in the back end and, and what i mean by that is um you know, outside of Jordan, we've got some versi- – now talking about Jordan Jefferson, outside of him, we've got some real versatility on that D-line. And so, get some guys that are fives to play a little bit of three, some threes, move them out. That will just give us some versatility where they know what to do. Um, and then I think that every rep we can get with Lee and, 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 and Mike, you know, he's really athletic. He shows. I like his I like his potential a lot. He just needs reps. You know, so in the last two weeks, we're going to play a lot of 11 on 11 football, less segmented wise as far as doing group periods, more 11 on 11. Pollen Day. I mean, hey, Palinde. Let me get it right. Palinde. It's Palinde. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Palinde. Reputation's a blocker. He showed that in the, mm-hmm. in the stuff that we've seen, but better a receiver than maybe you thought? Let's or? put improving. Okay. Improving. <laughs> um, he's been, he has done, we signed him because we felt like that. We wanted to add uh, a blocking tight end, and we felt like through the portal that he was the guy that on video had done it against good people the best. And so when he came, you know, we knew that we felt like we'd get that. And not only a guy that can play, you know, in the backfield, but also can put his hand down to be a true tight end. Um, and so – and. and what we saw on tape has become come to fruition, and he's been an extremely hard worker. Um, he plays with really, really good technique, um, and and that's kind of spreading to those two young guys that are getting reps right now, Traylon Davis and Victor. And you can kind of see them coming, but he's done a great job setting the standard in that room, you know, for how how to practice. And he's grown as a receiver. You know, if you would ask me that in practice too, I'd been like. Ah. I don't know, but like he seriously, he made a couple really competitive catches today. They were contested, and he did a good job. and And he's understanding space where he's never had to play in space. So his game's growing, and, and I'm proud of him for that. Yeah, so I'll talk to him. Um, Goose rolled his ankle a little bit, so he didn't get as many. Nothing serious. He just didn't get as many reps. Nico had some flashes. He, he hit two deep balls on great throws. Uh, hit hit Bryce on one. You couldn't put it. You couldn't place it any better. The, uh, you know, he missed a a protection that would have caused a big sack. You know, a freshman mistake. 
Um, I thought he, he, he did a better job just managing the game as far as he got one delay uh, penalty. But other than that, I thought he managed it. It's slowing down for him a little bit. Um, I thought Garrett did a nice job. Um, he, he made a really poor decision in our two minute. But other than that, I thought he really he had a, he had a good day. He, he had a couple of good runs. Um, he made a, no, a couple of nice plays outside the pocket, which is something he's done. Um, but he was accurate when he got out of the pocket, and that's something he really needed to improve on. And then he hit one really nice uh, deep ball. Uh, he hit two. I'm sorry. He hit one to to Sam, and he hit one to to Bryce. Is it a big day for quarterbacks in general today. Just the, where you are in the spring and what's going on. Yeah, it, it's a big day. We we kind of used it as moving day. You know, since the Masters and on, we try to use a golf term and. And really was, I think that what, we, what we've stressed to them is, and what we talk about with guys in our program is we have 15 practices where what we have on campus is what we have. And, and they know we're going to add pieces. I think we've got, what, 12 or 13 that, that have signed that will be here in June. And then we've got another five uh, scholarships that are open. So 18 guys will be added between now and fall camp. And those 18 guys will have an opportunity to show that they're ready to play over the first 14, 15 practices in fall camp. And so this was the second scrimmage. It's kind of like when you're taking a class, you know, you do your homework and your daily work is your regular practices and these scrimmages are exams and the exams count, count for more. And it's like these scrimmages. So um, I haven't watched the tape yet. I'll be able to give you a better feel once I watch it. But, yeah, this was. And, and, and we make it a point to tell them, hey, these, these, are, these count for more, you know, because you want them to have to perform under some pressure. Along those lines, is there one or two aspects either side of the ball, special teams even, that as you look at your next two weeks, you think, all right, I don't have to worry or devote as much time to that. Or conversely, like, oh, I got to put more into that. Anything that stands out? Yeah. So the way we go about it, Mike, is really the next two weeks, and this is kind of to build off what John was asking too, is there's a lot of the practice planning is going to be for the quarterbacks. And, and when you think about defensively, it's going to be for those secondary guys. Because um, when you look at when you look at our football team, um, if you outside at quarterback, like we've got a bunch of guys that have played a bunch of snaps, you know, all five offensive linemen, uh, Palinde, when O'Laughlin's back, the who tight ends played a lot, the th- uh, Sam and Bryce have played a lot, Tony's played a lot, Lynn Jay's played a lot, um, and so from an offensive standpoint, other than just getting reps on the on the new schemes, is we've got to put the quarterbacks in some situations you know, where, where we see what we have. And so a lot of the practice planning is going to be with them in mind. And then defensively, we've got a, a lot of experience returning up front. Um, and so Mike linebacker safeties is where a lot of that, you know, as far as how we're going to practice and what we want to get done is is for those guys. You want it that way. It seems like it's pretty tailored to what you have to do. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, it narrows it down for sure. And, and we'll do some things these last two weeks that's getting ready for season opponents as well. You know, so, um, you know, the initial, we've basically got most of the install, not all of it, but most of the install that we're going to do on both sides of the ball is we've got in. And so now we'll start repping those schemes against some things. Offensively, we'll start working against some of the defensive looks they're going to get in the season that our defense doesn't play. And then conversely, defensively, we'll start working on some offensive th- uh, schemes, formation, personnel groupings that we don't have that they're going to see early in the year. And then, We'll start doing some 11 on 11 special teams work. Really, the only full um, scheme work that we've done is field goal, field goal block, and then punt. You know, we've been doing a lot of segments and a lot of uh, fundamental drills special teams wise. What we'll do here the last two weeks is do full kickoff return, full kickoff, full punt return to, uh, um, to get ready for the season. As far as Zaki, mm-hmm. you mentioned him a couple times. What has kind of stood out about him? Is he. Yeah, he's really – he's got a high football IQ. Yeah, he does. And and does a really good job of reading blocks. He plays hard. Stronger. Um, you know, he's – he's this is his first year in college, you know, and he's stronger at the point of attack than, than a lot of young players. And so those are the things that are really jumping out so far with him. You mentioned a lot on the – people confident that he'll be ready for the season or what's his status? Yeah, that's you – know, that's how we're proceeding. You know, he's, he's ahead on his rehab. Um, he's done really well with that. You know, I think he's, he's getting closer to being able to uh, jog and run on, on hard surfaces, on dry land, however you want to say that. Um, and so, yes, if everything 
continues to progress on the same manner, we, we, we anticipate him being ready for the season. Summertime, is that what the time yeah, is? so he'll start. He'll be able to run, um, and he looks better. He looks better. He uh, he'll be able to run in May, and we hope he'll be full activity when we hit summer. Some of the new equipment you have downstairs for rehab, mm -hmm. you know, the water, you know, treadmill, some of those things. I mean, you wouldn't have had that in your day. So the rehab opportunities for guys like them, are completely different than it was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, the technology is better for sure. You know, it, you, you got the underwater treadmills, you got the zero gravity. You know, we probably use that as much as anything. So what it does is it allows you um, to be further ahead than you were 10 or 15 years ago. You know, and, and I think, too, is not only that from a rehab perspective, but the recovery things we have. You know, it, it was really interesting to me. Uh, Keith Tandy talked to our team last night before practice. Uh, we did a really light fundamental work last night in – uh, really, that was catered toward the high school coaches over here, fundamental work and stuff like that. And he was just talking about the things that are here that our players have access to that maybe some of the NFL teams don't even, you know. Uh, the NFL players have to go out and hire their own people or go to different facilities to get the kind of services that we have here from a recovery aspect. And so, you know, whether it's cryotherapy or where it's float tanks or light light beds, all those things, we have them. And our guys now, um, they're using them. They're spending more time in this facility and, and taking better care of their bodies. Whether it's this time of the year or in the fall, do you cringe when you're going to have prospects in and the weather is <laughs> not good? You can't yeah. change it, but – what do you do? I, I would like for it to be sunny, 75 and sunny. That would help us, right? Um, you know, we went inside today. Uh, we went inside. Uh, we could have easily practice outside, but I felt like we had we had a bunch of people watching today. So um, I wanted my father in law was here, so I want to be nice to him, right? But uh, no, it is what it is. Uh, my uh, my parents sent me a picture. It snowed in Kentucky, so it it always, it, it it could be worse, right? And they had it on the ground. Uh, the horses are running at Keeneland too. That's not a good. That's they. You think you've been cold at a baseball game? Go to a horse racing. That's a different kind of cold. You know, you have growth house on campus. Kicker. Yes, he's, yes, he's the kicker. Yeah, he committed kind of late on the transfer. So he yeah he came in. He's a graduate. So graduated at Florida State. It worked out where. Um, What's that called, Kelly? I'm gonna take advantage of you. What's the what is the tri our online schools on trimesters a part of it, right? Or what is that? She's not even coming through. So, um, we have a semester that doesn't start till March, Mike, and so he was able to enroll. He's in school right now. He's in graduate school. Um, sorry, I don't have better information. I know the school st the the enrollment starts in March, so he was able to come in. Um, and got into the the March term, or it's going on right now. But he has. He's been through every spring practice. Um, he's got a strong leg. Um, he's competing with Casey for, for field goals, and um, he's done a really nice job kickoffs. Can you possibly keep up with all the wrinkles for stuff like that, like middle semester enrollment for a graduate student? <laughs> you learn as you go. Yeah. I mean, because every school is different. You know, it, it's a whole different aspect, too, when you start talking about transfers because – Transfer, transferable credits is different at every university. Um, what universities will require, what they'll accept. Um, so it's more complex than probably general public understands as far as when guys can enroll because you got ad drop dates and those type of things. Talk about transfers. How much are you I – mean, how much you put emphasis on multi-year guys with eligibility left but, compared to one and done type? Positionally. Yeah, that's that's kind of how we manage it. You know, it's you know if if it's a a real need, okay, where you're looking for a starter, the number of years doesn't matter. Um, but if you're light in a room or at a position, you know, then it does as far as whether it's a one year or a multi year. So I think it it just has to do on an individual basis. When they can enroll, be a difference too. That does. That does. That factors in. Uh, as we were looking for the specialist, it definitely did. Okay, and, anything else for Coach? And the other thing, too, is grad or undergrad, you know, because that makes, that makes a difference, too. And um, But there's a lot of 
in this in this kind of new world we're in, there's a lot of things that you got to think about that you didn't necessarily before. Um, we're going to go Tuesday and Thursday, um, and then we'll uh, I don't know what's on the schedule, Mike, but we'll we'll open we'll open some of that. So probably be Thursday is that what we talked about. Yeah, probably go Thursday. We're gonna, it's going to be some teamwork, so we'll open that up. So let y'all, uh, Michael, can communicate that to you. All right, thanks.